It's a Monday and we've got a special guest with us is uh, Karen Fenton Ellis. We've introduced her to no pony club for Karen Fenton Ellis. No pony club, but she is a world public speaking champion of the world. Did you do Toastmasters as well? No, not at all. I think, you know, ever since I was, I was a child, I was involved in, in Timaru with an organisation called the South Canterbury Drama League. And, right. and they had a lot a of opportunities of for young people to be on the stage, yeah. yeah. And I and, uh, had a number of leading roles in, in repertory musicals, all yeah, sorts what's, of... Which ones? I can sing just Oklahoma? a little bit too. Oklahoma? No, no, I was in West Side Story. Yeah? Yeah, I was Anita in West Side Story. I played, um, oh, goodness, the... the um, the um, and Annie, Annie, the secretary, Grace, Grace, Grace. and Annie. Um, I've been Sally Bowles in Cabaret, the lead role in Cabaret in Christchurch. Oh, very and no, cool. no, 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 we're not going to give any examples today. <laughs> just, just take my word on that one. Okay, one of the things you did mention, and one thing I'm very uh, proud of, is your role with the JCs. You joined in 1984. That's right. Joined uh, the local chapter in South Canterbury, and uh, like anything, when you get involved in organisations, particularly organisations that develop young people's, you know, mm -hmm. professional entrepreneurial skills, you know, you work your way up, you find challenges. Uh, I I thrived in that organisation. I was going to say, you must have really, because you took it I beyond it. where a lot of New Zealanders mm. wouldn't have gone. And there were so many opportunities that I would not have had in my life if it was not for that organisation. It singularly um, is the entity to which I owe so much. So take us through it. You, you right. became New Zealand president. When? I did. And New Zealand president, you, you put me on the spot. In 1993, I was New Zealand president. Mm -hmm. uh, then in 1994, I was elected to the position of world vice president. Uh, there are 17 world vice presidents, each serving between five and ten countries in the world. So, you know, thinking that I speak French and a little bit of German, maybe assigned to Europe. No, I was assigned to uh, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Nepal, Sri Lanka, and the Maldives. All right. And so I spent uh, a couple of months there Traveling on the road. Travelling around. Travelling, yes. Yeah. Um, being is that a paid job? Or no, is it not at all. No, not at all. Voluntary. Well, voluntary. I mean, you, you must have your expenses paid. I mean, well, obviously. Well, you have your airfares paid. Yeah. Um, but everything else, you, you basically take a sabbatical. And I was fortunate to be in a position to be able to do that. And it's really, it's not, if you go as a tourist, you're there for the wrong reason. That's not what you do. You are treated, obviously, uh, uh, as, as visiting royalty, but you're there mm. to get hands-on muck and help the local organisation in its um, leadership, its strategy, how it moves ahead in the community, but also be involved in a lot of the projects that, that JCs is yeah. doing. You know, and particularly in those countries, I spend a lot of time in or orphanages, hospitals, schools. But then you progressed even further from this area. Yes. Carry yes, on. Um, Carry on. Because I just think this is marvellous. People sitting at home will not appreciate what you have achieved in the JCs or the Chamber. Well, I found the combination of being able to, you know, there's a lot of personal self development that comes through it, and, yeah. and almost by default, because you're being exposed to so, so many opportunities and so much. Uh, well, it was an international learning mm. curve, really, and you're so deeply involved in, in making a significant difference. You know, people say to me, what can one person yeah. do to change the world? And you sit there and you say, well, I can't do anything, so why bother? Well, that's not the case because, it, you know, really what you do or what you won't do makes the difference, and I'm a great believer in that. And I think we all have a responsibility to try and commit in some small way. And I know yeah. it might sound trite, but, but to make the place in which we live and bring up our children a better place to be. No, you, hang on, I've got to get my handkerchief out here, Karen. Oh, yeah, you're you doing do a that. It's no, true, but it's I, true. I, Okay, you, you joined in 84. You became, though, uh, the president, the, the, the well, number I one. Well, I did, I did. And um, what year was this? We're talking the 90s now, aren't we? We've moved well, forward. Well, that's right. I became World Executive Vice President yeah. in 96, which meant that I was assigned to one of the four regions in the world. So yeah. I oversaw the vice president. Still not like. a paid job? So not a paid job, no. So in that year, um, I was assigned to the Americas, so North America right through to South America, and I chaired the All-American Conference in the island of Martinique in the Caribbean. Mm. And that was hard work. Yeah. And then the following year, I was appointed as general legal counsel for the worldwide organisation. So I would um, administer and advise the world body on anything constitutional to do with, yeah. with our rules and regulations. And that involved um, sitting on the executive board. And then in 1999, I was appointed to the position of chief executive assistant to the world president, which... Um, often is something of a nod that you may be in contention for world president, but you still have to go out and fight a full political uh, yeah. electioneering party campaign. Okay. But you became world president. I did. What I was year? I was elected unopposed, which is almost unheard of, uh, as world president in Cannes in 1999. And not only that, but you're a female too. That doesn't happen often. No, there's only been two of us to this yeah. day. In 90 years of the organisation, only two. And in that role, you went round the, the world. It was significant. I mean, I'm not talking about the female side of it because I'm a great believer it doesn't matter what your mm. gender is, but, but that is a cultural um, situation to many countries in the world. They had to have confidence and comfort in the fact that I could be elected to that role and, and respect whether it would be their religion or their culture. Still not a paid role? No. Okay, so you've gone around the world. How many countries? How many uh, nations? Just on 120 nations 120. and territories in one year. Mm. And you met 
the man. Many people, I mean, if you ask people to sit around, who would you like to have around your dinner table? I'd say 90% of the people, apart from Tiger Woods these days, <laughs> would be uh, Nelson Mandela. <laughs> And you met Nelson Mandela. Uh, I was I was actually extremely fortunate that year because uh, when you when you become the world president, I mean it's it's a whole different situation. I mean obviously you're leading an internationally respected organisation. You know, five hundred thousand members around the world, over twenty million alumni who've been through there. Many distinguished names. I mean, if you think, you know, Bill Clinton was a JC, um, Al Gore was a JC, uh, a number of Japanese prime ministers have been JCs, and you know, you look at the people and the heritage that the organisation has, and we have a great deal of influence for young people around the world and every country I travel to I was fortunate enough to meet in most cases the Prime Minister yeah. or the President. Prince Albert of Monaco, um, he was he was charming, you know, yeah. I met him. Um, the Prime Minister of the Royal Family, Crown Prince of Japan. Mm. Mandela must have been great. He though. was. Um, do you get the autographs? I mean it was a bit no. naff to do that, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. Bit naff to I'd so leave that to you, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> do you have your no. photo taken with them? I have got a number of photos at home. Yeah? Yes, That'd be enough, hey? That would But be you're great. there as an ambassador for yeah. your organisation and it's incredibly important that um, you're there to put forward the views of what the organisation is thinking and achieving internationally. Um, so it's important not to be too starstruck like I am in the studio with you yeah, today, good Steve. good on you. Don't rub it in. All right. Uh, politically, though, at least when we've talked, you touched upon it, the political, the, the Bill Clintons, the Al Gores, or this, you had a bit of a political bent yourself. We you had bit. a crack. Yes, I did. I um, ran for parliament here in New Zealand in 1996. And uh, for the National Party, and a why does that not surprise called me? Rumataka. Um, <laughs> I was actually um, looking at, at a different seat, but that was the year that um, National went into an agreement with Peter Dunn and Harry right. Belmont. Uh, so I stood in Rumataka against two sitting MPs, against Paul Swain, the Labour Party MP, and Peter McArdle, who had moved to New Zealand first. Okay. And how'd you get on? Uh, well, we were very successful. I mean, we were expected to lose on paper. Jeez, by... you, you should end into politics. You know, well, we you were. just answer the question. <laughs> how did you get on? First, second, or third? Second. Second, second. thank you. Thank but you. we were supposed to lose by 10,000 votes. We lost by 2,000. Well, and, you know, the a, irony of MMP, yeah. and I'm not getting into an MMP discussion, yeah. is, you know, um, the man that won, which, which was terrific. I mean, Paul Swain won, and he went mm. and sat on the opposition benches. Yeah. Um, the man that got third became a cabinet minister, and I got runner up and went back to work. No list for you? Oh. Went on the list, no? No, went back to work. Went back to work. Let's talk about work too. But apart from talking about Action TV, I want to talk about Tower, because you're very much involved in Tower. Another mm. situation that probably people sitting at home aren't aware of. You joined them when? In 1997. Straight after your, the, the election, I think. Was yeah, right? It was, what actually. Yeah. Up until that time, I'd been working in a role um, with the New Zealand Police, which I probably omitted to tell you about, and that was as the National Director of the well, DARE, DARE Programme, Drug police, Education and <laughs> Schools Programme, which is a phenomenally successful programme for yeah. young people. And uh, that was a great passion for me. I mean, I was fortunate to be able to work uh, in an organisation that, again, was making significant difference for young mm. people. Uh, the opportunity came along to be involved in Corporate New Zealand, and I did jump at that and became the Group PR and Communications Manager for Tower, so that was almost the insurance 13 people. years ago. And you're ago. still involved with them? Still involved, still work for them full time. So, you know, when you say to me, what do you do? I sort of look at people and say, how do I describe what I do? Yeah. I mean, I work full time for Tower. I um, occasionally work for Trackside and uh, I also work for Tiaka. So it's a, it's a busy life. What made you, what possessed you then? And we're gonna, we, we have actually, we've got some footage. Ah, oh, you we promised me you wouldn't do this. No, we're gonna, we're gonna bring it up now. The Action TV, I wanna take you back. Uh, this is uh, early stages, people, of Action TV. I'm just waiting to get the okay that it's all set to get. Okay, let's, let's have a look at, and listen to it now. Action TV, one G. Simon with uh, Karen Bisdy. Talking about excitement, I think it's an appropriate time to introduce one of the major attractions of this job, my co-host on Trackside, Karen Bisdy. Hi Karen. Evening George, and indeed a night of great excitement and one that we've been looking forward to for a long period of time. No better time to join us live Trackside Action TV as we count down to a spectacular week of racing with the DB Draft New Zealand Trotting Cup free to go and free to air to you next week. There will be high glamour and glitz, high performers, high stakes and the best horses in Australasia and we'll be there live. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> So we've, got, was, uh, no, we've he, got George back. I uh, heard his comment about you asking me a question and then you could go down the road yeah, and get an ice cream. Yes. Well, George, that one's for you, but you are my dear friend. So. Yeah, okay. I tell you, he looked like he should have been in some sort of rock band, didn't he, in those days? With the, 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 we looked yeah. quite different, didn't we? Yeah. Well, we do look they were different. exciting times. You, you applied for the job, obviously. 
Uh, I did. Because you wanted to get into broadcasting? Well, no, I already had a background yep. in television. Yeah. I'd, I'd um, worked on a number of occasions for Television New Zealand. And, you know, the opportunity came up, and, and it was a love for racing that I had. You know, I, w I was no expert, and I never professed to be mm. an expert either. And, you know, the, the two of us came together, and, and George, with his, um, you know, his expertise in the whole racing and, and breeding world, uh, my background in television. And, you know, I think we made a good team. And, you know, we're still great friends to today, and working mm. with him was always and remains. You know, Karaka again this year, we have a lot of fun together, and he's a man I respect you immensely. Must, especially, I mean, it must have been harrowing those early days. I mean, it would have been off-the-cuff sort of stuff. Well, Steve, how, how do I put it? Uh, yes, contrary to popular belief, can I actually confirm that we have not, do not, and never have used an auto key? Yeah. Um, I never have. I know when we did the Sunline special, um, I made a point of, of you know, learning yeah. what I really wanted to talk about because it was very important to give due, you know, um, diligence mm, to our mm. wonderful champion. But we did fly by the seat of our pants. I mean, and we were also running the channel on the smell of an oily rag. And, and, and do you think you're a better broadcaster for it? I, I reckon? think so. Yeah. I, think, I think what it does, every now and then you might get a bit stuck when things happen or you lose a link or whatever, but not having an auto cue means that we um, are very flexible and well, we have to be, you know that, we have to mm. be very competent at adapting to any sort of situation that comes to pass. And you know, you learn in broadcasting, you're never going to be loved by all people. Um, you, you don't want to develop a, a hide that becomes too thick. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's life. Um, that is life. So George was the, the, the pro in terms of background information, but you were the, the, the broadcasting. So, so I suppose you worked him well, well together. He helped you with knowledge on racing. Oh, he was phenomenal. And you helped phenomenal. him with the broadcasting. He was, was. I mean, to be fair, I don't think George needed a lot of help with broadcasting prowess somehow. You know, mm. I mean, he was, he's always been a, a natural. You know, he's, he's terrific to in that arena. Needed to see a hairdresser back in those days, but still. Well, the yeah. moustache was pretty moustache. cute. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it? chocolate But milkshake. Um, no, I learned a lot from him, and he was, he was always very supportive. And, you know, I remain, I always remain grateful for that. But mm. also, also, um, to the TAB because you know they stepped into the unknown and they put me in a role which, yeah, you know, this is what this is my 18th year I think involved with Trackside now. 18. All right, with me is Karen Fenton Alice. We've talked about her time uh, with the JCs. We've just introduced you with Action TV, but of course your days with Action TV you were known as Karen Bisdy. I was indeed. That was uh, my married name. That um, what well, when I married my late husband, obviously, mm. uh, it was it was Bisdy. And, and that was a sad occurrence, obviously. I mean, you weren't married that long, really. Well, no, it wasn't. We'd actually just had our 10th wedding anniversary, Steve. And uh, my husband, uh, as a result of an accident at birth, was, was an epileptic. And oh. we were very aware of that. We brought our children up uh, very conscious and cognizant of that, that if, if, if Bruce was caring for them you know, on their own, I have two daughters, uh, Lydia and Julia mm. Rose, then they had to know what would happen if Daddy had a seizure. So yeah. from a very early age, it was very much a part of our whole fabric of family life. And uh, unfortunately, and it, it would have uh, certainly been something that he, I know, would have been devastated about. I mean, he he was a very entrepreneurial and inventive man, you know, very, very good with his hands, great with engineering. And I think he would have been devastated to know that, that something that he, he, he strove to overcome so strongly was actually um, uh, what, what, what um, killed him. End, yes. yeah. Yeah, he had a seizure and uh, unfortunately he suffocated. I was waiting in a restaurant for him to come and have dinner with me and he mm. never arrived. So it was a very tragic part of my life. Incredible turning point in your life, one, and you, you don't have to answer this. You, you can say, Steve, I don't want to answer this. But one thing I, I, intrigues me, and I'm going to ask you now: you reverted back to your maiden name. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was for a number of reasons. I mean, it was a it was actually not my maiden name. It was my mother's maiden name. Oh, okay. And you know, I alluded to my mother yep. earlier on. And my mother and her family throughout, you know, my life um, were, were a rock. I mean, yeah. they were phenomenal. Um, my mother's parents, and it was a respect for my, for my own family as I had to forge a new career. I mean, people don't know, Steve, what to do with a 35-year-old widow. Mm. It's something, you know, with two little children, it's something quite foreign to our, to our society. And they also assume that you've been, um, you know, left in a very affluent position. But, of course, with Bruce's epilepsy... Um, there was no insurance, insurance payment, so yeah. you know, huge mortgage. Uh, luckily, two two jobs, um, two little girls that I had committed to private education. So you know, you couldn't, and I say this in a very respectful way. I mean, you know, the, your back's to the wall. You have to get back out there, and and do what you need to do to survive. Really, mm. it's as simple as that. Amazing, and and I mean, obviously, your mother, the the history with your mother bringing you up on your own. 
gave you the, the confidence yeah. that you could do it yourself. Mm. And phenomenal, you know, the, the, she came and spent a lot of time with us and, and was, was uh, instrumental in, in being there for, for my children, almost as a surrogate parent. And if it wasn't for her and, and the very dear friends that I have around me, um, it, it would have been impossible to go on and aspire to be the world president. Mm. You know, to be in that position and still manage to become um, an, an international leader was... Uh, a huge accomplishment, but also a great tribute to my family and my friends. It must be amazing too, because of that, because of Bruce's death, that you're in the situation that you are now, living out at Tiako in, in mm. your second marriage. Well, it is. I mean, you know, things sneak, sneak up yeah. on you when you least expect them. I'd had eight years, uh, you know, on my own bringing up the girls, and I certainly wasn't... Uh, in the marriage market again. I mean, yeah. I um, was becoming very feisty and very independent, as people who know me well can probably attest. I have an opinion on most things. And um, yes, I, I met David Ellis. Where did you meet him? <laughs> well, there's a long story I'll keep very short to this. And um, Colin Gillings is actually uh, the instrumental person in this because, uh, and very, very loved friends, Colin and Alison and Gillings. Uh, I met David in the committee room at Trentham. Wellington Racing Club's uh, cup meeting uh, when they spotted me across the room and I think yes. David sent Colin on the reconnaissance mission to bring me over and be introduced and the rest as they say is a little bit of history. Energy is not a bad introduction to horse ownership distinctly secret. Oh yes, it was a wonderful introduction to horse ownership, Steve. Um, he was, uh, Sharon him was my wedding present from, from David, and David of course bred him, and, and he doesn't need any introduction to the horse, I mean he mm. won almost two million dollars in stakes, a great old war horse he was. Oh look! Look at this, we've got we him go. for you Karen, you could you ask, oh, that's my we chess. deliver. Chess, chess, that's, that's This is the Alapuni Gold Cup. Yeah, he won two of them of course, Yeah. and uh, it was the first, the first race that he, I think this was I got a feeling this was his. Um, yeah, this was the one that I, it was the first one where I was an owner. Okay. And uh, dashed away. He here. dashed away, but I remember how excited I was. I mean, not many people have the have the joy of having a first horse to the race and, and a Group Two winner. But he was just, you know, he, he hardly had. Well, he didn't have a day of injury. Man, he was an absolute magnificent horse. Cap, cap, Celt Capital Stakes. Yes. Well, he ran in four consecutive Celts. Mm. Um, no horse has done that, and I think he had a, a win in two seconds. Yeah. And you know, one of those seconds was was when he was 15, 16 in the betting. And if it wasn't for that horse called Excellent, he would have yeah. won a second Celt. Just a horse, very proud of him. Just a Very horse, proud excellent of him. Just a horse, excellent too. Yeah. Uh, no shame so, in running second to him. No, certainly was. And uh, and of course, uh, David's your involvement in the stable quite significant. Uh, well, I think so. I mean, I'm very involved in um, more of the, the the marketing and the PR side. Have a, a lot of interaction with our owners. So I've got to say, Karen, it is absolute pleasure to have you, to have had you here, and we and I hope people at home have learnt more about you, especially about your successes and your achievements. But I'm going to talk about now about Tiaka and and David Ellis. I mean, come sale time, and we all see him on TV. I mean, what's it like at home with him? Is he under pressure? I don't, he... I don't actually know. He's he's one of the calmest people I know. Get out and I, of it. No, yeah. I'm serious. I, and I really admire him for that. I mean, it, it's interesting because he's not home a lot, obviously, before the sales mm. doing all of the inspections. And then we go to the sales and I go earn, he goes spend. But you know how it works. I don't earn as much as he spends. Um, so we don't actually see a great deal of each other. Um, but... See, there yeah, we go. Yeah, I know. Now, what's this? The, the wink. <laughs> he's made it his, hasn't he? He has, really. He has, hey? really. And there he is. It's, yeah. uh, was that the cult this it's year? My daughter I think. Lydia, yes, Lydia you can see on the left. The dark. She's beautiful like you. Oh, God bless hey. Steve. But that, I thought, he, I thought side, he bought that well this side. year. That's the three quarter brother yeah. to Darcy Brown. It, it was very good buying. But no, they're, they're very organised. They've got their strategy in place. And uh, he and Mark uh, have gone, you know, they go to the sale with their shortlist. They're very determined on, on what they want to buy and what they want to achieve. Um, they stand um, strong in the market, but also stand. Um, very intelligently, so you know they're not carried away by emotion. Um, you know they have a limit on what they believe they'll do, and, and they stick to that. I remember meeting Mark Walker when he first came. David Ellis introduced him. It was probably my early days too, and he was a quiet, unassuming, shy type almost. Uh, he has really bloomed and blossomed, hasn't he? As a, not only as a person, but certainly his success as a trainer. Well, I think so, Steve, and I think that, uh, and I say this quite independently. You know, it's an interesting role for me. I'm, I'm very discriminating about what hat I've got on and where I'm yeah. wearing a hat. You know, yeah. that's the first thing. But I do believe that history will will record itself, you know, in decades to come, uh, that Mark Walker will have been one of the greatest trainers of his time. I I'm quite convinced that that uh, he will be um, noted for that, you know, as the history books unfold in time. Can I ask you a question? This will mm. get you going. Is he going to stay in New Zealand? 
is he going to stay in New Zealand? I think there's no... It's funny, I've heard all these rumours going around. I thought you might ask me that question. Well, I thought I might ask you yeah, the... because, you know, <laughs> I heard this rumour when I was in Perth, actually, Look, over I've there for the so sales. Look, I've heard so many rumours going yeah. around over, you know, over, over my life and Mark's life yeah. and David's life. I can assure you that the one thing that uh, we do know is that uh, Tiaka believes it is time to go international. Yep. Uh, that uh, probably in the next year or so they will look at setting up and establishing uh, an international stable. There's absolutely no decision on where it will be yep. or who will be where. Uh, it could be Melbourne, it could be Singapore, but at the end of the day, whatever they do, it will be Mark and David doing that together as a team and it will be um, in cooperation with, with Tiaka. And I think that's great for New Zealand racing and it's good for the New Zealand thoroughbred as well. I'm going to give you an opportunity now. Saying you, you hear these rumours and things like that. Let's talk about the things in racing that really annoy you, frustrate you. You know, that's, yeah, that, that's interesting, isn't it? It's, um, I suppose the one thing probably that disappoints me from time to time across the board is, is, is the jealousy that we can experience. Mm. And I the think, tall poppy syndrome? Yeah, there's a tall poppy syndrome and there's, there's you know, I mean, they say jealousy is akin to cancer. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's an illness. It's a, mm. it's, it's, a, it's a very unfortunate thing. And I, I really do wish we were a little more positive about celebrating our successes and being proud of, of achievements. And on occasion, we do let ourselves down in that arena, I think. Yeah, talking of proud of your achievements, you've got to be proud of your two daughters too. And I've got to say congratulations hey. to you the way that they are they're following in your footsteps a little. Well, it's interesting, I suppose, you know, you have role models in life. My mother was certainly mine. And um, sometimes when I hear how assertive and, and, and uh, strong-willed and natured my daughters are, I'm not quite sure where they get that from. I've yeah, got right. absolutely yeah, no yeah, idea right. at all. Yeah. So but, where are um, they? What are they up to? Uh, Lydia is at uh, Victoria University. She's 21. She is um, commencing her Masters this year. She uh, achieved First Class Honours last year, uh, which was wonderful for her in politics and religion. And uh, Julia Rose has just transferred from Victoria to Otago University, Communications and Media. Uh, yes, you will usually hear my daughters before you see them, particularly the younger one. Yeah, is that right? You very proud very... of them both. Yeah, and, and your love of horses, but you've got a love of other animals, haven't you? <laughs> I completely uh, do lally when it comes to... You are do lally about one thing. What yeah, is it? Dogs. Karen? dogs. Dogs. A particular dog or just all dogs? My three. What? you got three dogs? I've got three. No wonder you got a big property at Tiaka. Well, I have to. I think David was in a bit of shock when he realised that, you know, I came into the marriage with two three... Daughters. Do yeah, two daughters? Two daughters, three dogs, who all, might I add, are inside dogs. I mean, they yeah. live so inside... So what are they, Bichon Frieses no, or what? No, 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 no. I've got um, Karaka, who is a flunked, failed... Um, Guide dog. SBCA dog? No, he's, no. he's, a, he's, a, he's a, he was a New Zealand Foundation for the Blind okay. Dog that didn't make the grade. What, did he walk into so, lamppost? What's his problem? Uh, no, what was his problem? No, um, he apparently um, showed a little bit of aggression towards oh, okay. another dog, but All he's right. never done that with my okay. dogs. All he's right. wonderful. So he's a Labrador? He's a Labrador Retriever. Yep. Okay. And I've got an English Field Setter. And right. uh, he's quite quirky and loves hunting and being going quite in the water. crazy and going in the water. And these inside dogs, they all smell too. No, they no, all no, smell doggy. No, no, they don't doggy. do that though. I keep them around the, okay. around the property. Right. And then um, I was devastated last year when I lost um, one of my, my little Wheaton Terrier on the road. Right. And uh, I have a new Wheaton Terrier called Miss Molly Alice and she is a terrorist. Terrorist rips everything to pieces. She is a complete terrorist but much loved. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's good. No Samoid. There. Oh my goodness, I heard that yesterday. What were you thinking? No. You're talking what? about your Samoy dog. dog. Yeah, no, but the, the horse had its tongue out the side. That's yeah, how but it was Albie a very was. Um, interesting description, I thought, Steve. Well, that's, that's, just, that's the way it was running. It had the tongue out the side. My dog used to run like that. Our Samoy dog used to have the dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, the dogs are great. I mean, and I, I, am, I, I love all animals. I mean, if I can save them or not run them over, you know, on the road, anything mm. like that. It's, but, but that's good. You know, I was brought up to believe that you can tell a lot about people about the way they treat or they think, uh, how they think about animals. And I think No cats? Not a cat person. Tom's at all. a cat killer. All right. Yep. So we couldn't have any cats on the property. But you know, we've got our horses and, and our dogs. We're going to see you on trackside. Continue on. Well, at what know, stage? I always think that in television, particularly for women, going to get into trouble here. No. Um, we've all got this used by date, but it seems to happen to women rather than men. So it doesn't matter how um, old, grey. You know, yeah, and, and you. dilapidated yeah. some of the boys can get, but yeah. but no, I'm not going to have any cosmetic surgery contrary to popular belief. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm doing a little bit of TAB TV. Um, you know, we miss we Tower. miss no more retro. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm still full time with Tower. Um, I look after anything to do with you know the annual results announcements and and uh, our annual meeting. Uh, anything to do with with the media, the PR and, and comms for for the group parent company, okay. and still with Trackside, still with TRK Stables. And sometimes a wife and a mother. Beautiful. And you do it well. You, you do it all so well. Well, Karen, thank you for leading us into your life a bit and your background and the history and your successes. I think we should applaud and salute the successes, and you certainly have done that internationally, and may they continue on.
Cheers, Steve. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Reggie now gone. Penitentiary here's distinctly secret to the outside. As to a showgirl Maroofity in front. The stable mate starting to charge now. And he ranged up. Penitentiary comes with him. Distinctly secret is race to the lead though. Distinctly secret. Showgirls arriving the last little bit. And then Penitentiary. Van Winkle behind them. But he had plenty of class on this field. And distinctly secret will win. Showgirl brave second as to Penitentiary. Baby.